Hi, I'm Bonnie, Log Cabin Stitcher. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my sewing room. You can follow me on Instagram at Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. On Christmas Day, um, I wore I wore this little front piece, so let me take this one off. I wore this all day and I forgot I had it on. And my son and I went for a walk in our neighborhood and uh, we were walking Riley up the street and I heard someone say, kissy face. And I looked over and it was a friend of mine who we met and kissy face is actually Riley. Um, and actually that's what I call her as well. But um, she said, I didn't recognize you with the stars on your head. So I usually don't go walking around with stars on my head. But I had done, an, um, uh, in between Christmas and New Year, I had done my last floss tube, um, number 10, in my elf costume. So I thought, why not do it with this? Who doesn't need a little happiness and uplifting right now? Um, I do. And that's part of why I am doing this today. Part of why I wanted to wear these is just to bring a little bit joy in your life and to remind myself to remember joy. So, um, I am going to do, like other people are doing, a 2021 plans or whip parade. Mine is going to be both. I have been having a lot of fun. I'm going to show you what we're going to go through. Um, I love baskets and I love plastic boxes. I like organization. These are my project bags. Those are some of my project bags. Um, and this is to remember. I did not even know floss tube existed until August of 2020. I thought a project bag was a Ziploc bag. And um, so I thought cross stitch was not going to be in my life anymore because I had done it 80s and 90s. And then I got into so many other things. I'm in my sewing room and I keep thinking I'm going to organize. And then I think, okay, I got everything. I got it good. And then no. I needed to get my wool out so I had to go in my office and I was trying to be quiet because my husband was sleeping because it was probably like midnight and I got down my wool boxes. I have three big plastic boxes of wool and my wool roving which I will talk about in a future in a future time <laughs> because I have enough to show you and I thought this is ridiculous. I have stuff on my floor in my office because I can't get it on my closet. If I can't organize stuff in my sewing room, I shouldn't have so much stuff. That's a pretty good idea, isn't it? Because I feel fortunate to have a sewing room. And that's why I've been wanting to organize it too. So I'm going to keep organizing and keep doing stuff. Um, but I do love organization. So this is what I'm going to show you. And um, what else did I want to tell you? Um, it's, been a, it's been a rough... It's it's been rough. Um, 2020, a year ago, started out so differently. In January, um, the economy was booming. I had an upcoming um, time away with friends that I had looked forward to and saved money for for a whole year. And I got to do that at the end of February, and it was a ball. Um, and then I got to make a trip out to see my dad in Colorado just a couple weeks after that and just spend time with him and just be with him. And um, then that was mid-March. And so I was out there in mid-March and I was so focused on just spending time with my dad and just being with him and helping him accomplish some things that, that um, would be helpful for me to help him accomplish. And I wasn't really paying attention to the news and I was hearing different things about the virus. And I thought, I, I got so much focus going on here and then the world, I was going to say, I was thinking about it. I was on my walk and I thought the world as we knew it changed. No, I think that's um, a statement that I don't want to make. Part of the world that we knew changed. Yes, part of my world changed. And, um, and I, like many, have been kind of reeling and figuring out things as we go along in the midst of it. And, um, and it has been a rough year. It's been a rough year for the world. Um, and uh, from someone who struggles with anxiety and depression and doesn't like change, it's been rough. Yet I've worked 
and I work in the public and I have not been sick and I thank God for that, but I work very hard at supporting my immune system. Um, and, and I've been in my sewing room. That's been part of my mental wellness is spending time in my sewing room because I do natural health and, uh, sewing is natural health. So, um, so I've really been working at staying positive and um, bringing positive things in my life and staying focused um, on my rock, which is my Jesus, is my rock and my salvation and trying to keep an even keel in the midst of all this. And then um, then we, we go into 2021 and, um, and it's been a different year as well. So I'm just trying to keep my mental health up and um, bring joy and stay focused on things that are true and lovely. And that's that's why I'm recording right now. Because yesterday, honestly, um, I didn't even put makeup on because I cried half the day. Um, and the day before, it was a rough day. So I just thought, enough, enough. I don't wanna live the rest of my life in fear in, in crying and all this. I've lived a lot of my life that way and I won't do it anymore. So that's why I push the record button. That's why I'm wearing these silly things, even though that was what I had planned anyway. And that's why I'm sharing. Um, so here we go. Um, all that to say, and it's like, oh yeah, actually it's recording. That's a good thing. Um, here we go. So I showed you my little basket and, and I'm going to just show you not in depth, on my projects and these are just some of my projects. I just wanted to share with you what is on what is on my table now, what is in my sewing room now, what brings me joy right now. Next week could have a lot of different projects going on. But um I'm a goal setter and I had taken off work um 4 days for Christmas and then I had planned to take off 4 days for New Year's and I ended up working New Year's Eve early. Um so I had 3 and a half days. And I had plans and I thought, okay, I really want to get, I've been doing these vinyl. Um, and if you've been following me for any time, you can see I've really been into the vinyl bags and I counted and I've got 25 now as of this morning. Um, but I thought I really want to take time and do some different zip, I was going to say Ziploc bags, different zipper bags. And I had thought, okay, by the end of the, by the end of what I had taken off as vacation, I'm going to learn how to make a new one. So come Saturday morning, I hadn't done that yet. And I thought, okay, I'm going to do that. I am going to make a new zipper bag. And I knew, so Celeste from Celeste Creates has become a very special friend for me. And um, I knew that she had a zip bag tutorial. And I thought, what a better way to learn than with a friend. And I was talking to my son and I, I have a book. I am not a auditory learner. I didn't, I don't really like to read directions. And so he said, oh, videos are visual images. Visual, I'm a visual image learner. So Celeste taught me how to make a bag. And um, so I made this one with her directions. And um, so this is a bunch of fabric. I have, I have a lot of fabric and I have fabric, a whole line of fig tree fabric that I had bought when I was new into quilting, like in 06, 07. And then now I, I don't particularly want to make a quilt out of it. And I thought, great, I can make a whole lot of different project bags. So this is one of the project bags that I learned. And I'll show you what I have in it. But I have quilting ones and cross stitch ones. And so on mid, and it was funny, then I got on the phone with a friend. And then I was doing this. And then I was doing that and taking Riley for a walk. And I thought my goal was to get one of these done on Saturday. So it was so funny. Um, I finished that bag and I looked up at the clock and it was midnight. I met my goal. Then the next day I was determined to make a different type of zipper bag. And I did that too, but I had to go for a walk to think it out and do it. So I've been sharing some of these on Instagram. Um, so here we go. I'm just going to share them with you. And remember, I am new returning cross stitcher, not a lot of experience in the new world of cross stitch. I've learned fast and I have a lot of my quilting projects and um, beading projects and I, I do a lot of stuff. Um, all my other stuff has kind of been put on hold because I found floss tube. I know my word, you guys are wonderful. 
And then I started buying and buying and buying and buying. And then it's like, okay, 2021 is not going to be my year of spending lots of money because I don't need to. I've got a lot of stuff and I like it. So I'm kind of now finding a new equilibrium on, okay, I got a lot of stuff. Maybe I need more threads. Maybe I need more linen. Um, I know I'll always want more charts, but it's like, good golly, girl, I got a lot. So I'm just going to show you what I matched up. So I am not going to start all these projects. When I first learned about floss tube, it was from Shanda Quilting in Idaho's um, Mania. Um, Mania, May, Mania, whatever it is, you just get a whole lot of projects going and started. And I don't know that that's going to be me, but I can tell you I love matching things up and I love planning and I love gathering. It's not always the doing that I want to do. So this is what I am going to do. What I did is I love coordinating things together and I left this mess. So usually before I do a video, I lay out a quilt that I'm going to show on my next quilt video because I do quilt videos too. Or I, I lay something out really nice and tidy here. But this morning on Instagram, I thought I want I want my stitching friends to see what my quilt table looks like. Um, right now I had to clean all that stuff up and I have everything piled here that I want to share with you. But I just shared a picture of, of my projects. Because one thing that I like to do is match all these fabrics together and plan. I love the planning stage. But this is what it takes. It takes making a mess. And I'm in the midst of doing stuff with all this, going through fabrics, auditioning, this and that, and and matching things up. So I love the project bags where I, I match an outside and an inside fabric together. And then I thought, oh dear, then I can match the chart to that bag as well. So let me share this with you instead of just talking about it. My, and, and it's funny, as I... Um, you're probably going to get wiggled, but that's the way it goes. Um, as I have this, so this is in a three-tier cart. This is a, ba a basket that I have on my top um, three-tiered cart. This fits right in there. Before, I said that I like to have them flat so they didn't bend on the bottom and I can look through them. Well, now I got too many for that. So it's, it's a constantly changing thing. And maybe I, I will change something next week. This is what I got this week. So this is what I'm going to share with you. Okay, project number, and I have them in like the short ones at first. This was one that I shared on my um, floss tube. Look at, see, I, I love the vinyl because you can see right through what is inside there. I shared this bag and I said, oh, I'll share what I've got going on inside of it. And I never did. So just in case you want to see this, well, this is, this is my life. This is my joy. This is matching this piece of fabric with this piece of fabric and matching the zipper. It, it just gives me joy. Um, so I'm going to share my joy with you. But see, it also matches this project. So I got this at my local needle workshop, um, Needles and Niceties in Upland. And I bought it for my Christmas and I put it in my stocking. And it was a kit and it came with it came with fun stuff. Um, it even came with um, the chenille and everything. But, oh, that's where the whisper is. Hmm. I was wondering. I'm going to I'm going to use this for the lamb. This is my start and and I didn't get very far. So that's oh. And I put my hoop in there too. Um so Again, I'm I'm new at this and I know there's usually like a protocol of of you sharing different things, but here we go. Like I said, it it has been quite a week. Um so I'm just going to I'm just going to I'm just going to go with it. So um, here we go. We're just going to do it. Okay. Here is another bag. This will just be what I do. I share the back. Okay. So this, again, it was fabric from my mom and I had shared it last week, but, um, this I was thinking, Oh, it reminds me of spring. And so there we go. I've got hello spring in there. So not all of these, um, am I going to get all, I'm not going to get them all kitted up and everything. I'm just planning. I'm playing. I'm matching things and I may take it out and do something else with that bag. But this is what I do. In my basket, I will, if I have a fabric that I think I'm going to use for that, I will put this in there. This was just one of my hand dyed. This is the coffee dyeing um, that I learned from Christy at Daisy K's Primitives. And I had just pre-dyed, because I just wanted to play with it, a, a coffee dye. So this is my project, Plum Street. Usually I do show notes and I put lots and lots of notes 
there's no way that I'm going to be able to put um, all these projects. Um, I'm not going to put all these projects um, in the show notes. So hopefully if you're interested in getting the chart, I will be able to show it. And these are all charts that are available now, as far as I know. So here's my next bag. This was one that I did tea dye this fabric to make it darker, but see, it's a bird. And look at, I even matched that. Pretty good, huh? Um, and then it has hand dyed. This is hand dyed fabric on the inside. And this is my Not Forgotten Farm. Um, this is a limited edition. And so if you want it, get it now because it's going to be gone probably. I loved the tabs. I love the birds. It looks, that's like a cool looking bird. So I even, this is going to be the inside. So that's what I do. It's like if I have, oh, and I even was playing with the fabric and I don't have my glasses on and they're going to shine. So I don't even know for sure what kind of fabric I chose, but this is just what I do. I have my coffee in the morning. Oh, there you go. What is that? Uh, 36 count flax Edinburgh linen. Um, so this is what I chose for that. When I go to do it, will it be different? It just might be, and that's the way I'm going to roll. Um, how can I do this without making a mess? Then, you know something really cool? Um, I was stitching, and um, I was just watching the floss tube, and I follow Lori at Not Forgotten Farm, and I was just watching one of hers, and um, just seeing what she was sharing. She just shared her designs, her cross-stitch designs. And then she said she said she said that she was going to share some of the floss tubers she watched so I thought oh I better get my notes and I, I was stitching so I thought I'll listen to it and then I'll get my notes and I'm listening and I'm hearing the people and I thought okay I know that person but oh no I don't know that person so I'm going to write it down and then she said log cabin stitcher and I was like log cabin stitcher that's me she watches me <laughs> it was so cool and then I had to listen to it again and then I told my husband this this lady follows me and I follow her. I know. It's one of those weeks. It's one of those weeks. That gave me so much joy. So Lori, if you're watching, that made me so happy. Um, here's my next one. So this is the bag. People have asked if I will do a tutorial on um my project bags. I'm not a tutorial girl. I'm not organized. I am this 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 is like the real me, like woo, all over the place. Um but I have in my playlist, the very top, um, on my playlist, I have like my floss tubes, I have my quilting, and I have different things. Um, some of my favorite music, but I also have videos by others. And the very first one on there is um, Jen, J-E-N-N -N, Crafts. And that's where I learned how to make these. I just changed the size. So in my floss tube 10, I put the measurements because this is the size that Jen Crafts makes. Whereas I wanted them bigger. I got it. I always change something. I always change something. So I just make them an inch bigger and I just do a little bit different on top. Not, not much difference. So if you just want to do what she does, go for it. Oh, I didn't show you what was in there. Um, so this is, um, three tulips and see, I've already got some stuff in there. So that's my parchment 40 that's called for. And I have my Pelican gray just to make sure I don't use that in another project. Uh, when I saw this, this was one of the first charts that I bought. When I saw that, it's like, that is so cool. I got to find it and I got to buy it. And Brenda Gervais used to be, I, I have a lot of her patterns from when I did embroidery and she did um, by my hand, I think it was called. So I, I've been doing a lot of Brenda Gervais and I didn't even really know that she was like so famous in the cross stitching world. Oh, I was just going to put this away because that's what I like to do. These are like little file things and I love them. This is about the only... Um, cross stitching that I have done. So this one was one that I, I did finish this week. So this is like a new one for y'all. Um, but again, see, is this not cool that that brown matches that brown? And then look at what's inside. Um, I'm going to share about that chart in a minute. And you know what I was going to say? If I forget, let me know. It Because I really, I honestly feel like you guys are there. Um, and this is going to be more of like a, just a chatty one because I have not had much caffeine, but oh my word, I've had some sugar and it's, it's, sugar is my poison. I really do feel like I'm just talking to friends and I know other floss tubers are saying that too. And then I read my comments. I have been under a lot of stress. Me and the whole world, um, have been under a lot of stress like this week. 
and and I ate sugar, which I was I was gonna nix the sugar, um, but I had I had a lot of sugar today. And now I'm I'm done. I'm done with sugar. Um Jane. See, I can't even remember what I was just gonna tell you. Remind me. In a minute. <laughs> Let's just go. Let's just go with it because I'm not gonna start over again. Okay, that's the fabric. That's pretty. Um oh, I'm gonna share with you. If you all want to hang with me, I'm going to share with you what I've been up to lately in a minute. But um, I actually ironed this, so I hope you guys feel special. Um, I ironed this. This is my Oh Joyous Day. And the I've really, really in the last week or two, this is really the only cross stitch that I've been doing. I've been working on this. And this is one of my <laughs> stitch alongs that I am hosting. So this is um, hashtag joy nevertheless, S-A-L. And I am doing the chart, Oh Joyous Day. But please, I have a whole video on this. And I would love for you to join along. But I want to keep moving in this. Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. Hang tight and I'll tell you. Okay, Oh Joyous Day. I'm working on the bottom part. And um, this is my, my Shanda gave me this as a gift. And um, so I've got that sweet little lady on there. And this is how I was doing it. I was putting it in bags. You know what? I'm, I'm going to be rolling with a lot of different things. So I have this stuff in bags and this is working on this one. And so that's how I've got that. But I was stitching. And in why I wanted to stitch that in particular was two things. Because I had started a stitch along and I hadn't been doing much with it. But I, I the whole purpose of that stitch along was to remind me of joy nevertheless. And so even though... Life is not going the way I want it to go. Darn it. You know, I think for everybody that's about true. Um, I had to be reminded. Joy, nevertheless. My hope is not in this world. My hope is in Jesus Christ. And that is my joy. That is my confidence. And I will choose joy, nevertheless. You know, we got to tell ourselves to do things. Um, and so I had a talking to with myself. And I picked up that stitching plus... I still have my Christmas up. You can tell right there. That's my Christmas in here. We still have our Christmas lights outside. Half of our neighborhood decorated this year outside for Christmas. That's unusual. A lot of us still have it up. That's normal, I think. A lot of people started early. We started the weekend right after Thanksgiving. But we still have Christmas up. And Christmas is still up in my front room. And one year I left it up till uh, Valentine's Day. That was a little too far. But um, we still have it up. And I still love sitting in there. So instead of making project bags in my sewing room, I sat out there last night and stitched all, I stitched until two o'clock this morning because I was, why not? Um, I was having fun and I was stitching. And then the other thing was, you know, when hard things come up in your life and you feel just unloved, you gravitate towards things that make you feel loved. I'm sure I'm not the only one. So my sweet viewer, Rosa, um, had sent me this beautiful Duchess hoop, which I have shared in the past. Um, but I, I picked it up and my mind was telling me this, this is what you need to do. Um, and as I was doing it and it, I was getting all set up, I thought, Oh, I know why, because I felt words of affirmation are my love language. And I felt loved when Rosa sent me that Duchess hoop. And, and then the joy nevertheless. And so the, this is how I do life. Um, I just choose things that bring me joy. And so that brought me joy. All right. It's 23 minutes and we've got a lot to share. And I want to, I want to try to make this not forever long. So let's keep moving. My other stitch along that I'm doing is in this bag and it is, um, and, and I have not stitched on this because for two weeks I was working on a um, hand quilting project and I finished a quilt that I ended up giving to my son last night that was my mom's that just needed some extra quilting and I've made a lot of project bags so I will share those with you um, but I have not I have not made progress on this but it's gonna I'm gonna get back to that but I love that Wren Wren was the last two things that I shared with you so this is that and this is um, our so our hashtag our friends of the heart SAL with Kim contented stitcher and I are doing that. And oh my word, Kim finished her Oh Joyous Day that she was doing with me. She finished it. And I barely started. So she is she is a magnificent stitcher. So check out her floss tube. Okay, here's my other one. This was one. I have a lot of fabric um, that I inherited from my mom. 
And so this is, again, just to show you what gives me joy in matching things up. Um, that's the fabric for this. So the reason I have these is because I really, these are just pattern pieces. I got into, I've shared this before, Anila, Anila Hui. Um, stitched sewing organizers. I have been going over and over and over this book and I've shared this before and saying, I want to make these. I want to make these. I want to make these. And I was like, well, girl, just do it then. So that's what I did on Sunday. Um, and now to help me because I want to, just like a lot of people are working through the, this book, um, Blackbird Design Sewing Club and doing each one of them. There's so many projects that I want to do in here, and I'm learning skills, and I really am enjoying that. So hopefully I'm going to get to the part where I can share with you what I made from that book. But if not, it'll be on another video. But these are just the pieces that go with that book. So we're going to stick that in there. Okay, so here's another new one. I had purchased this fabric. So this is some coffee fabric, and um, I had purchased... Uh, um, a charm pack which is five inch squares for quilting and coordinating fabric years ago um, years ago probably 15 years ago 10 years ago I don't know I bought it and then I couldn't find it and and I was gonna make um, placemats and then I thought eh, I don't really want to so but I remembered I really liked it and I, I love this fabric but again it's old it's probably not available but it I love it I found it when I was doing some cleaning and so it's been perfect for project bags. I made a new project bag. I can show you a sneak peek of something that I made from that girl's, that girl's Anila's. Um, I made a big, a big zipper project bag. Um, so what's in that one? This, I want to get that started too. Um, all I have, the one Onyx, Onyx by Weeks. Is amazing. I love it for um, birds, for blackbirds. They're perfect. Okay, here's one. I think I had just finished this on my last one. And I'm using all the same zippers. That These are just the regular zippers from Zip It Zippers. I'm not using the big old ones because I want, I would need to fit a lot of these. And I, I don't, I don't want all the little charming things that hang on there. That's a, this week. By next week, I'll probably do all those. Black and white because I, I still have not gotten my color printer going. These are Valentine's ones. Um, Country Rustic Primitives. They're gorgeous. Um, I haven't, I have not matched anything up with that. I just thought I want to do it. So here's one. I had already done a project from this. This is my bag. Um, and just like everybody else in the floss tube world and cross stitching world, not just floss tubers, um, this amazing book. There's two projects that I really want to do, and um, one of them, one of them is this guy. Um, I really want to do that one, but I want to get some smalls done too. So I was watching Olivia Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, and she was just sharing that she wants to start um, the strawberry. I, I don't know that I'm into the strawberries. By the time I finish it, I might. Um, this guy. So I want to do this, but I think I am going to do it as a flap. So I will need to adjust the pattern a little bit, but um, that's awfully cool. Have not kitted anything up. I just um, need to start gathering stuff, but that it's just because it matches that and I'm putting that in there. Um, this one I shared on the last one. See, this is what I really enjoy. A Christmas tree with pine that matches and wood. And this was from Barb, Lost in Floss. Um, I had watched a video on Sam Bree stitches with her interview and she even talked about Miss Green jeans. So she got, um, Belle Swa, Miss Green jeans. See, it's just, I just plopped it in here. We're not all organized yet, but I was having fun. Then here's another fun one. Okay. That fabric, that, which goes with, in case I don't get to see, look at the cord feet and it's, it's my mom's fabric. And I even figured out. I'm going to share about these, but probably not till another video. Look at, I even figured out how to do a pocket in there. Um, and that little one can fit in that big one. That's the cool thing. Okay. Hang tight. Cause that, we'll see if I get that in here or not. Okay. So again, Olivia on pumpkin hollow quilts has finished, finished. Gosh, it almost makes me want to cry thinking about how beautiful it is. Anniversaries of the heart. 
um, she finished hers and she's she's going to share the stories about the history that she put in there. It was gorgeous. I'm not going to make it though. I really enjoy watching other people's. But in the Anniversaries of the Heart, this was the only chart that I really wanted to do because, again, I got a whole, I've got years and years worth of collecting a lot of other stuff, but I thought, I'll, I'll choose one. And so this reminds me of the night sky. I think I'd shared about this. And we have moths that come in at the cabin. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do this more like our log cabin and the big old moth. So that's in that one. And of course that bag is like a cabin. Here's a fun thing too. Every, everything is fun. Everything is fun. What's not fun. Okay. I'm really not used. I'm not, I don't usually do text fabric, text as in words, not my thing. I like images, but I had purchased for myself kind of, um, the whole home fat quarter bundle from Kathy Smith, Schmitz, Schmitz, um, who is sister to Bonnie Sullivan of All Through the Night. So see, this is what I don't like about having them upright. It is, it is bent. It is bent. I don't want it bent, but that's the basket. The basket bends. Anyway, the fat quarter bundle came with a panel and this is what I, and I know it's off center, but that's the way it had to be. So this is a panel from um, the Fat Quarter Bundle. And I didn't have enough of the text to do the fabric up here um, for it to turn right side up. So this is how I did it. And then look at, that's even cool. That's even part of the panel. And this is what happens sometimes. Sometimes because I don't want to stitch across where the fleece does not always bond as well. Um, and that was actually my fault. It, it happened after I put it together. Um, but this is just how I do it. I, d I don't want the stitching to go across either the front or the back. So what's in there? I shared about this on my last floss tube. Um, stitches from the harvest. So there is many, you can see I've already got fabric chosen for stuff. There's many things that I want to make from there. So that's why I just put that in there just so because it matches. So a Kathy Schmitz book with Kathy Schmitz. Schmitz, Schmitz. Fabric. This is what sugar does to me. This is why I'm going off of sugar. Here's something that I shared on Instagram and people wanted to kind of know how I did it. So I think I'm going to save it to the end because if I, if I, if I'm yakking too much and don't have time to think clearly on how to explain it to you, I'll do this on a separate one. But I took my whips. I had a lot of embroidery whips, tons of embroidery stuff that I had not done something with. And I thought enough, I want to finish stuff because I get so inspired by watching floss tubers show their FFOs. I've got a lot of finishes, but not fully finished. So, oh, let's get it cleaned up. That's the fleece. Okay. Mom's fabric. Ah, look at this. Okay. So this is, this is still available. Crab, Crab Apple Hill Studio embroidery pattern. This, this fabric, this is old fabric that I got years and years ago. It was called Sandcastle and it was being discontinued when I got into embroidery years ago. Um, but I have a lot of it and I use it for everything. So that is fun. And this is, so this is a different kind of a bag. So I do like these. I like these skinny bags, but you cannot get a lot of big stuff in there. So I, that's why I'm making a whole lot of other big ones. I had fun and I did this on my Instagram. I showed kind of close-ups on how I did this. I had to figure out how to make it stiff. And there is vinyl on the inside was, was how I figured out how to do it. I had to go for a walk because I was frustrated and I'd probably been having sugar. And, and a side note, because this is just me, um, tomorrow is my three-year ketoversary. In other words, I started the keto lifestyle and intermittent fasting three years ago tomorrow. And I had a goal and I was really making strides toward that goal. And then sugar got back in my life. And dang, it's a drug. Sugar is a drug. And for me, it is poison. And once I let it in, I am a food addict. Um, oh, I know people look at me. I have lost a lot of weight. Um, people look at me and it's like, oh, you don't look like you have a food problem. How do you know <laughs> that sounded mean? Uh, thank you. You know, I should say the people, thank you. But how do you know what addictions that people have? Some of them, I will always be a food addict. Um, and I have lost a huge amount of weight over my life. 
Um, but I will struggle with it until the day I die. And um, I hate that struggle, but tomorrow, tomorrow I'm getting back on it. All that to say, isn't this cool? Um, so here we go. There is vinyl on the inside and it took a while to figure out. There's fabric on the outside. Basically, I slipped vinyl in the middle of this to make it stiff and it, it was a lot of work to make it all flat. So I'll share a little bit more about that. I'll leave it out so I remember. Cause you know what, at this moment, like I'm 35 minutes into it and I don't want to redo this, but at this moment it's just like, let's stop and redo it. But no, we're not going to, because it's like as if you were just hanging out with me and if you didn't like it, I know people will just leave if they don't like it. So if you're still here, thank you all. I love it, thank you. Um, here we go. Here's another, they got stuff all over them. A Christmas one. This has had a couple different projects in it because I did a lot of Christmas smalls in December. Um, see, look, at, I just kind of throw stuff in there together. This is, it's going to be this, um, I'm going to hand dye this afterwards. Again, remember, I'm not going deep on each one. Otherwise, you'll be here for hours. Still my black and white, but it's going to be sleigh bells. So Country Rustic Primitives, I have a lot of their patterns because I like them. And they're instant downloads. That's why it's black and white. Okay, Here's a cool one too. Again, I don't like that that's going flat. I don't know. Maybe next week there'll be something different. This I started. This is um, Wendy Petros um, from the heart. I started this like two months ago and it sits here and I was thinking, darn, I really want to get that done. So I'm going to get back to this one. This is, this is going to be one. I don't want to have a lot of whips going. I want to maybe have five or six. I say that now. I want to have like maybe five or six, but plans on starting other ones, but I want to finish before I start. Because look at, I, I bought that, um, you can't see it through there, um, dried roses, silk, thread gather. It's gorgeous. But I had started on something, this was this this was back in my thread wad days. Not doing that anymore. Um, this was back when I wanted to use what I had. I thought I could do it with this, and I will use this for other projects. But that um, that dried roses did not show up on the other, but it will show up on this. So this was the called for cappuccino. I've got 32 count cappuccino by weeks. And um, so I am going to redo it. I will, I will do this for some. I already know what I'm going to put that on. I'm going to finish that on something and maybe that'll be by next week. Um, but I really want to get that one done because I love that the thread and the pattern and it's a needle book. Um, I want to get it done. See, I'm not liking that it's bent over. Um, okay, I shared this. I shared this on my last floss tube, so just gonna do it. But I shared more detail on it. Um, so what is this that I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start. I'm gonna do the three pieces of this: the summer, summer, autumn, winter. The three pieces. I've got this stuff started, but I will not. I say that now. I will not start it until I get a couple other things started. So we're gonna keep moving. Okay. The next Christmas one, Not Forgotten Farm, because I love Lori's prim stuff. Um, so, got my stuff because I'm going to hand dye it. Got, got, look at, I even made, I got all these little threads. I'm going to start it. I even got it out the other day and I was like, I'm going to start it. I'm going to start it. And I thought, let's finish. I'm trying to stay disciplined. Let's finish something but that's going to be my next Christmas one that I start on Wendy Petros this was on her um this this is not Wendy's design but she had finished this but isn't that pretty okay so this is what I like so that's a wild fabric for my mom it was not going to be going in a quilt oh that reminds me okay let's stay focused okay dandelion fabric and I had shared when I had probably when I had made this, I love dandelions, but not in my garden. But you know, it's so cute. Um, it's so cute. My Chad, he's 24. He came over and he saw this in my sewing room and he said, hmm, mom, what's the significance of this? Cause he knew that there was something. And I said, oh my gosh. Oh, this was days ago because I had intended to do a floss two days ago. Uh, and I wasn't in the mood. Um, so this was a dandelion from my garden. And it was like, that dandelion is coming out of my garden. Um, but the significance of this, not only that I wanted to show you, 
I do like dandelions, but not in my garden. But when I was a kid, and this is what I told my Chad, when I was a kid, we would take them and we would blow them. And I, because my mom was a gardener, I'm sure she said, blow it in the street, not in the garden. And that's what I would have my kids do. Blow it in the street, not in the garden. It would probably just blow right out in the garden. I am longing to be a kid again. I am longing to live under my parents' home. They got to worry about life. All I did was life. And they took care of all the problems. And I would love to go back to being a kid again and blow dandelions and have my mom tell me what to do. And hopefully I would do it. Um, but that's the significance of that. Back to this. This is my project and it is beautiful. Um, Shepherd's Bush. It's a kit. You can still get it. Um, Shepherd's Bush. Thankful Bee. There's also one called Be Thankful, but this is Thankful Bee. The Border... I loved the whimsy of that border. And there was significance of that because uh, we were coming to the point, my husband had been off work with the union um, for a long time. And we were coming to the point where we were going to lose our insurance. And um, I'm an independent contractor, so I got no insurance. And um, we were going to be in the boat with a lot of other people. And then he got called back to work. And I was like, I'm thankful be another good reason to buy that chart. So I bought the chart that day, um, which was also the day that I saw it. So I had shared this. Okay. So here's this bag. I had shared all about this one on my last floss tube. So this is me and you, la -dee da And I, I just shared all about this on my last one. So we're just going to, but you can see the beautiful fabric on the inside. So that's another one. I know I shared about this one too on my last. Um, so this was one of my bags. And this is, I have it kitted up as far as the floss, but I am going to be doing Christmas Garden. Celeste, um, um, Celeste Creates just showed her finish. Um, Carol Saltbox Stitcher, weeks ago, maybe a month ago, had shared her finish that she had done from a while ago. And I just thought, okay, that's it. I can't stand it anymore. I paused it. I bought it. Um, but this is the one. But... I want a little bit darker fabric. I got the called for threads, so I want to choose just a little bit darker for a more primitive fabric, but you can see the fabric behind on that on that one. But I'm using the Calico Kitty, as Carol said, as she suggested. Okay, so here's my Blackbird Designs. I shared about this on my last floss tube, too. So getting this kitted up, these are my gifts from Shanda. Thank you, Shanda. Um, so that's going to be there, but I am going to be practicing how to make drums before I actually put that one together. Shared about this one on my last one too. So this is the bag and um, shared about this. So see, this is how I, I want to be doing them now. The floss, the ring with the floss, everything go in there. Okay. Um, this one matched up with, we're getting to the end, 43 minutes. Okay. Um, this one and I even have the box that I want to do it on. This is the autumn um, loose feathers for that part. But I want to do this. So I'm going to do that guy. And then I got the plain card um, box from Hobby Lobby. And it's going to fit on there. So, And I have not started that. I've chosen um, Vintage Sand Dune 32 count. Maybe that's called for. I can't even remember. I've got a couple of the things in there for it. But again, I'm not going to put those stitches in. I'm not going to get invested in that until I get some other things done because I may choose to pull that linen and do something else with it. So that's that's where I want to just like, let's get some stuff done. And last one, number 25, um, is something that I want to get done so it is up by fall of 2021. Um, this was what got me going. Um, Lori, Mr. The Stitches, was doing this and it was like, okay. I'm in, this was, this was the tipping point that got me back into cross stitch. Um, I want to make that one and I showed a chart. Ooh, close your eyes. Okay. I'm not redoing. I'm not, I don't know how to edit. So there we go. Sorry. Um, that's where I got, oh, I talked about this. I had like an, I had an issue with the floss on that. So, um, that's my story on that one. And that's my bag. I love, I love the bag. Hollis Hill Creates is where I get, um, that was Winter Brew, Hollis Hill Creates. All right, those are the project bags. What else do we want to show? I can just show you this real quick. I had shared with this before, but I do love wicker baskets. 
and oh my gosh, I've had a lot of these wicker baskets forever. I just went to Joanne's and I was looking for another cart and I looked at the wicker basket. It's like, oh, that's so beautiful. I looked at the price. It was like, oh, good grief. What are, what are, what are they asking that price for? So I did not get it. This is how I like to store my charts and I have them on my table and I like to, this is what I look at and I have the shorter ones there. So what I do, and I have shared this before, I will have a chart and if I want the fabric, I put it in there so I know. And then I can just look through and I can, I can just look through and see what I've got in here. And then I use the mat, um, plastic sleeves. I cut the, the three hole punch thing off, but look at, see, I have that fabric with that chart and it stays together. So that's my organization right now. It's been like that for um, a couple months, but I like it like that. But I, at the moment, I still have the charts that I have finished in there, but they will, I will probably need to have something different. Okay. Oh, I, I've got time then to keep going on this. What can I share? Let's go back to this now. Okay. So this is how I did this. So I had this embroidery and I trimmed I trimmed it down. I had a quarter inch all the way around. Um, I trimmed it. I marked it with one of those blue disappearing ink pens. I know people are using the friction pens too, but because I had not used those before, I was leery of doing that. But actually I used one the other day and, and it's working. Um, but I trimmed it. I ironed it. I turned it and I stitched it on the fabric. Um, and then to get the stiffness, because I like this firmness of the vinyl. That's also why I put a strip of vinyl on the inside here. That was something that Jen Crafts does not do, but I do that strip of vinyl. But the fabric can shimmy. It can move a little bit on the vinyl. And so I thought it was moving around a bit, because you can see it. It moves around a bit on that vinyl. So I thought, what am I going to do? So what I decided to do was... Um, and how did I get that on there? Let me get my glasses on. It's probably going to shine, but that's okay. Um, how did I do that? Oh, I know what I did. I just, I measured. So I just doubled. Usually when you're doing these, you've got this piece of fabric right here. And if you know how to make these bags, you know how to do that. It's like several folds and then you, you put, you tuck the vinyl up inside and then you stitch it. And that's how you get the stiffness and that's how you get that going. So I just measured, I doubled what this fabric is. So I doubled that, folded it in half, and ironed it. Then I measured, and I got this baby sewn on there. And then I did not want to stitch around it, um, but it was moving and it was shifting. I thought, I'm going to have to. So I did very careful stitching, and I can't even see it. I did very careful st machine stitching. So it's machine stitched all the way around carefully. I didn't want it to show, but that's holding it in place. So that is, is there. And then I went to sew it, but this was even shifting from here. So then I was very careful. And before I, I, I put the binding on when it was still in the stage where it was just the, the, this piece and this piece, I did a basting stitch to keep that vinyl, um, stuck to keep the vinyl connected to the fabric so it would not shimmy around and I wouldn't have a bunch of um, puckers. And that's why it took a lot of, it took a lot of figuring out. That's why I had to take a walk. It was like, how am I going to do this? Um, and I figured it out on my walk and that's how I did this. So there is vinyl on the inside of this, but you can see this is, this is lined. So it has three layers, four really. It has the fabric on the inside the fabric on the front, the vinyl on the inside of it, and then this here. So again, this is why I don't really do tutorials because I'm not really good at explaining clearly. It's hard enough to figure out how to do something, yet to explain it, I don't do as well. But uh, message me, comment um, if I can clarify anything for you. And I, I need to acknowledge that the last two weeks I've been struggling with a lot of anxiety and depression. And I'm not good at being still when I have those times. I have to frantically do things. That's why I've been frantically making things from this book. It takes a lot of focus, and that's what I needed. I have to be still and sit and look and read all the comments because I love to respond to them as much as I can. And so please forgive me. I have not. I see when the comments come up, and that gives me the courage 
to keep doing these because even this week I was so down. I just thought, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing anything anymore. And that's where it's like, I don't, I don't want to be that way. So your comments keep me having the courage to keep doing this because I'm an introvert and I struggle with my emotions. And these are, are, I put myself out there and I am received and loved and that's what keeps me going. So thank you. And I will respond. I, I need to, I'm really doing very little caffeine. It's the sugar. So this is some stuff that I did from this book, which is amazing. Um, there is a needle keeper, a needle book in there, and I made one. So here's my needle book. This were, these were fat 16s, fat eights, no, fat eights that I got. So this is, um, this is one of them, a little pocket. So this is according to the pattern. I use these a lot. These are just the, the little thimble things I put on my fingertips. That's what I use for embroidery and hand applique. This was just the size of wool. This was real wool, real wool that I had. And this is according to the pattern. But you can see this piece doesn't go all the way down there. So it's not really deep. And so because I like to change things, um, that night I was up late and I, I was playing with designing my own. So I took that concept and what I learned, her book is amazing on learning about different aspects of putting these together. So what I what I am going to do is my own big needle book. And this was a project that I had finished from before. And this is I it's still in the designing stages because I mean it's I'm taking her design and I'm just playing with it. But I just had a layer cake and it doesn't go all the way down. I thought, well, I can make it deeper by digging in my pile and using a different piece of fabric. So this will be a pocket, this will be a pocket. Then this was a I have a lot of wool. I have a lot of everything. I have a lot of wool and this is a real wool piece and what what wool is good for not only for sharpening your needles and using them to put pins and needles in but if you get your flosses and you lay them on here and you close this it holds on to them um, and it grabs onto them and so that's what I was thinking I love this piece of wool and so I may just leave that a big old honking piece of wool then over here I have these pockets going this way so this is where I kind of veered a little bit these pockets this way and so one two and then because I love use those little thimbles I thought I need a little tiny pocket so I had a little charm piece so um, then I realized I was playing with it this morning when I was having my coffee outside and I thought yeah things could fall out of here and so I learned a little bit so I looked in her pattern book and there's there's another way uh, there's one of the projects and I'm going to use this leftover piece of fabric and I'm going to learn how to make a tab and then at Joanne's, these are what she calls for. I've never, this is where I am learning, even though I've sewn for a long time. I have never used these magnetic snaps. So I was playing with them. That's why they're out of the packaging. I am going to, I am going to use one of her patterns to make a magnetic snap on here. So that way it will hold things in more. So that's what I'm playing with. That's how I deal with my crazy I got a lot of crazy in me and I don't want to let it out so I sew a lot. I had planned on making a bigger needle book and using this piece of wool on the inside so we'll see. This is just what I do. I play with my fabric. This was something else that I found. I really want to do some, it's been sitting around for a while. Moths have already gotten to this. Um, this is this is needle felting and I will share a little bit more about this. I haven't done it for a long time. I haven't done it for years, so I got to remember how to do it, get it out, and then I will share the process with you. This is needle felting, and I have a, a pillow out of this, but I am going to do a needle book in one of her projects using her pattern and making that needle book. Um, or actually, it's a big project bag that you can put needles in as well. Um, what else do I want to share with you? Let's just keep going. It's 54 minutes. Um, so this, this was, so this is according to, she has one in her bag or in her book. See, 55 minutes into it, it's like my brain is, is getting lost. One of my goals for this 2020, 2021 is to not drink sodas. I don't drink traditional sodas, but I drink Zevia or Zevia because it has Zevia rather than sugar. And then a friend of mine is like, look at my lipstick marks. Um, she shared this for Christmas with me, Spindrift, um, sparkling water and real squeezed fruit. It's natural, carbonated water puree, juice, juice. So no sugar, no gunk added. Let me get a drink. Hang on. 
I really want to go off of even the natural sodas kind of a thing just because I'm spending money here and those things are expensive. So I can drink water. It's a lot cheaper. Um, so this is my bag. I learned how to make a flange. Um, and I am learning that putting zippers on is not terribly hard, but if you don't do it right, you can have to do that to open it up all the way. So I just need to learn to be a little more careful about my quarter inch seam. And so this is the fabric and that's how I figured out how to do a pocket. So the neat thing is, cause I was showing my husband and he's like, Oh, nice. What's it for? And I said, let me show you. So I showed him how I could put that project bag in there and then this is my thing that I use. That's my, um, this is my magnetic chart holder that can go in with a project bag. And what I'm, I'm videoing on right now is my iPad. This is my iPad case. So usually I have my iPad that goes up with me to the cabin so I can put my iPad in there and then I can put a magazine or book in there. And if I don't have a ginormous pad or uh, project, it all can zip up. It doesn't have a handle or anything, but it can all zip up and stay organized as we drive up to our little log cabin. Isn't that good, darling? Did I tell you this was fabric from my mom? They had a tent trailer, um, and that's what we grew up doing, a different tent trailer. But that is that project bag, which is also in, so this is going to be, if I can, I'm going to get another, I cleaned out my closet. That was a big goal. Clean out my closet, and I'm going to get another three-tiered cart. And in that, this actually, because I don't want to buy new stuff, because remember these baskets are really expensive now. This basket actually fits in that three-tiered cart. These are for my quilt project. So this is going to be a longer video. Um, but let me share with you some of these things that I have going. Um, so this was the one that I made with um, Celeste. With Celeste, this is a project. So I have not shared this before. Um, but I have a bunch of these fabrics. This was a fat quarter bundle um, from Joe Morton. And I am going to be making this the new couch companion. Obviously, I'm into these organizers and embroidery. So this was on Etsy and it actually was sent, I think, from the UK, but it came really quickly. So that is something. So these bigger project bags are working much better for my big, my bigger projects. So that's why I want to make these now for my bigger projects. Um, then this was one. Okay. Oh, actually I do have more of these. So this was a fun one in the sense that, that this is, this is fabric I really love. And this was the one from the Kathy Schmitz. This is a project that I had, I was just putting together this morning, but this is, this is what happened. So in the panels, the panels, oh, see, this is right. Um, I don't like having big things in here. The panel, um, I actually had to fit, to mix, to put fabrics together to make it big enough. And I also had to put this fabric. So I just got that fusible fleece and I just patched them together. So it's kind of like a Frankenstein thing, but I wanted to make it look pretty. So I had just done the fly stitch um, to get that done. So it just covers up where those two fabrics join. And then this um, cross hatch. I did that across the top just to cover those fabrics up. And then I realized it looked off balance because that's how it was. And I thought, oh, I just need to run, do another fly stitch down there and get that done. But I, I was happy with this. And I was talking on my last floss tube about how I was going to use these panels. So it's got bees on it. So again, I match things. And this was one that I had shared it's black and white, but it's Let It Be by Kathy Schmitz. Cute. It's only $3 instant download. So, and that's going to be the backing, you know, honeys and bees and everything. So that's that project. Oh, we got a big landslide going to happen. Fabric slide. There we go. I fixed it. Okay. Another project. Um, this is, this is one of my big bags and this is just a wool applique project. I'll share about more about that probably in my quilting video. Because I don't want this to be forever and ever and ever long. Do I have anything in here? I think I took it out. Um, but this was my this was my coffee bag, and I am deciding I made curved corners um, because it it was I didn't like the pokey corners. Now, here is something, and this is where I kept thinking. The other reason I didn't do a floss tube a couple days ago because I thought I need to finish a project so I can show them what I'm doing. And I thought, well, I'm never going to get a floss tube done then. So <laughs> let me show it this way. 
this is another finish um, that I've got on there, um, another applique project, and another one of these big pouches, and the flange, and the zipper. Um, so we've got that going with fabric that matches, and I love it. It's not finished, obviously. I really want to learn how to do the, the gusset in the bottom. I'm going to have a gusset in my bottom. Um, but in that, so here's where, this is my matchy-matchy thing. So notice this, Crab Apple Hill. These are not available anymore. These were from long ago. The whole set is gone. But see, this is these were my old project bags. Um, I am working on this whole project. And so I, I won't even have to put a tag on that. I will know this project is in this bag. Is that cool or what? That makes my little heart happy. Um, and I need my little heart to be happy. Okay, one one hour. Thank you guys, whoever's still watching me, thank you. Um, here's my other thing. I had this, I'm trying to, I wanna finish things up because I, I gotta have room without crawling over things. I want it organized. That's my 2021 is organized, organized. Okay, so I finished these uh, in 2020. I actually made these long ago. I was practicing my machine stitching on there and I realized I really hate whatever this is called. Scribbling is what it's called. I don't like it. I don't like doing it. Um, I like this. That's, that's a machine stitching that I like. I like plain. I don't like whatever that is. Um, but I had a bunch of these and I thought, I don't really like them anymore. I like the pattern, but I don't like what I did. I don't, I don't like all my machine stitching. So I thought, I don't really know that I want these as placemats, but I got six of them. So what can I do? Well, I can make a project bag out of them. <laughs> They're already lined. So this is what I was playing with this morning. Okay, so I did a lot of playtime this morning before I got called into work. I thought, okay, this will be my project bag. Um, zipper along the top, seam along the side, one project bag. Then I thought, ooh, then I can make a big old project bag. So then with this one, we'll see. By by the time I go to make it, I may want it to be a placemat or I may just give it to the thrift store. Um, I wouldn't do that. I would give it as a giveaway first. But okay, so big old project bag um, made in this way of that one, I think, where I would have the seams on the inside. But see, big project bag, big stuff in there. And then I may have a couple placemats too. So... There we go. There we go. Okay, that wasn't bad, guys. Okay, so what was I supposed to tell you about? What had I forgotten to tell you about? Can you remind me? No, I'm sorry, you can't. I had shared on Instagram about this little guy. Um, this is WC. This is my mom's bear. This is the bear that started her journey as a bear maker. And um, I really want to tell the whole story and I've got my sister put picture gave me pictures of this this guy but um this this started the whole bear making thing for me one of those bears up there is was her artist made bears this started the journey she did not make this one this was a gift that she bought for me um and I did not get him until after she died um so he is a precious bear but he is so precious and memories tied so much that oftentimes he has to live in my my cupboard that's right here. And I see him when I open my things up and I talk to him. And this morning he fell out and I thought, he wants to be here playing with me and playing with fabric. So WC came out. Um, all right. So we're already a, um, an hour and three minutes. Now, this is what I call the good stuff. So this is where I share about like my spiritual journey for the last two weeks, which has been... A considerably messy journey. Um, so a couple things, not not totally messy. So um, I I had shared that I love to have a word for the year. I like to look back at at the past year, things that I could have done better that are within my control. Look forward at the year coming year and what things would I want to do better, and what are my goals. I don't really do New Year resolutions as I don't know. I do New Year goals, and so, um, but honestly, New Year's Eve was was a depressing day for me. Um, I went to work, because I was like, I'm not going to work, and then they asked me to work. I said, okay, I'll go, and the guy didn't show up for an hour, and I thought, um, but I used that time wisely. It was good, 
and he was very kind so that ended up going fine but then we were going to have my son spend the night and then we chose not to um just because in our area i had a lot of people that i actually knew that were getting sick and i thought so my son who loves tradition didn't get to come over and so we we did a, a video chat with him that evening so that was fun but i i was just grumpy during the day and trying to be happy because my my husband was being so sweet and we got pizza and he was he was trying to he knew i was down and he was just trying to cheer me up and so i was trying to be happy to honor him and and uh anyway i did stitching that day but it i didn't i didn't have the energy or the brain power to think about last year and this year but i did i had been praying a lot about what what Lord, what word would you have for me for the coming year? Last year, my word was forward. And that, that was, that's a little bit of a bummer too, because I had really wanted to finish my goal. I have a personal goal with, with, um, keto and where I wanted to be weight wise and I didn't make it, but, um, but that's life. Um, there's a lot of things that didn't happen this year that we expected to. So that was the other thing was like, oh. but I thought, stop, stop being grouchy. Um, so I came up with not a word for the year, but three words for the year. Sometimes we just need more than one word. But I kept thinking as I knew that this year is going to be a challenge for me. It's, it's going to, my husband and I are knowing that this year is going to be hard um, for different reasons. Um, not to go into depth, but this is going to be a hard year for us. And so I thought, okay, so like, I don't, I don't care how much I weigh. Food's not going to be that important. What's, what's my word? Trust and obey. When I was a kid growing up, we went to a small church and I loved singing. I loved Sunday school. I loved the crafts. I loved everything. And then I went to a private Christian school and I loved everything. So I have a lot of Bible memory verses in me. I know a lot of old hymns. I love old hymns most of the time. Um, and so those have been really relevant for me right now. And so all through, gosh, the last 15, 20 years, I remember being out in the garden and being upset and just the words to trust and obey, um, trust and obey. I, I'm a bad singer, trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. There's a whole lot of more words to it, but that's what I thought. I, cause at first I was going to do trust. I need to trust in the Lord. I need to put feet to that too. So I need to obey. So that's my word, trust and obey so and i need i need help with that so i told my husband let's choose a verse for the year um james 1 5 um if any of you lacks wisdom let him ask it of god who gives generously to all without finding fault that is our we keep repeating that um because we're talking about an issue and it's like we got to pray for wisdom and so that's gonna that's we we tell each other those that verse um so that's my verse for the year too. I've never, I don't think I've ever done that before, but I need it this year. Um, and so there's been a lot of, of stuff that I have worked through. I'm a processor, but I'm an internal processor, which is very funny because my husband processes externally. So, um, I hear him in there talking and it's like, Hey, who are you talking to? <laughs> but he's thinking outside his head. I think inside my head. So I think a lot as I drive and sometimes it's like, got way too many bad voices going on in my head. Um, so the other day I just grabbed my Bible. So I, sometimes I do, and I know you're not really supposed to, but I grabbed it and I just opened it. I was like, okay, what am I going to read? And it, it was Psalm 144 and it was really, it was beautiful. So I read through it and I was like, yes. And then, then I, I went to find where's the verse, happy are the people whose God is the Lord. And it was in Psalm 144. So that was really cool. Um, then another time that I was just, I've been kind of out of it a lot. It's the crazy and, um, hard sitting still. And so I've been doing a lot of audio stuff. And so I just wanted to read the Bible. And so I opened it up to where there was something in here. And this was from another floss tube that I did where I shared from Philippians three or Philippians four, which was therefore my beloved and longed for brethren, my joy and crown. So stand fast in the Lord beloved. That was from a different floss tube. But I just started reading. I love Philippians 4. And I have a lot of it memorized. And so I had my warmie on my lap because I was really cold. And I was reading this. And it was like, yes, yes. I can see these things moving. <laughs> They've probably been very distracting for you guys. I'm sorry. But it was fun. Hopefully it will be fun for you. 
Um, okay. So this is what I wanted to share with you. And this is quite a few verses, but um, if you're still listening to this, it's because you want to, and these are going to be good verses for you. This is the other reason I don't do sugar. Um, sugar give me... <laughs> Hopefully I don't die of a heart attack. That would be really gross. But nobody would upload it if I, I'm having palpitations because <laughs> there's sugar. I had the last sugar today. Um, so let me take a breath and there I'll be good. But that's what I was just thinking. You guys wouldn't see me drop down because I have to upload this. I got to laugh. I got to laugh. Okay. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. This is um, Philippians 4 verse 4. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Don't have sugar tomorrow, girl. Um, that verse really meant a lot to me during one of the speed bumps in my life. Again, I've, I've had a bumpy road in my life. Um, and at that time, I really was thinking about that verse. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. And I thought, what does that really mean? I have a neat, I have a cool study Bible. So this is the Nelson study Bible, and it has the study verse study part down here. And it says gentleness. This noun identifies a person who manifests a calm and fairness of spirit. A person who is gentle is willing to sacrifice his or her own personal rights to show consideration to others. I am a selfish person. I really have a hard time trying to be considerate. And that's even on that new year's where I was trying to be happy to be considerate for my husband when I just wanted to wallow in my own misery. I even struggle with that. Um, but I've been telling myself these verses a lot because it's like, I just want to be grouchy and that's not good. I want to, I want this. So be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And I've shared before um, about why my faith is so vital to me. But during a time when I had a breakdown at the end of 1999, I didn't know if my mind was going to function right. And so those verses... Guard your heart and your minds through Christ Jesus. That was like a constant prayer because I thought I was going off. I was, I kind of did go off the deep end, but I'm still here. Um, and God's grace, I can work. That is, that is a blessing because I didn't think that I would be able to work outside the home and I can do that. Now, here's something that's huge because I know some of us are having a hard time discern or finding truth. I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, so, so these verses have been important to me. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. I think that's really important because if we dwell on all the things that we are worried about or angry about, or we, we don't like, we got to keep on the positive. So God is telling us, meditate on these good things. And again, stitching is a good thing. <laughs> um, the things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Okay, so that's Paul. Yeah, I know it's late, and Paul wrote Philippians, right? I am, okay. I know this is Paul. Um... So I remember a long time ago, I was in a class and we were, we were doing this, um, we were talking about this verse and I was thinking, because he's saying, whatever things you're seeing me do, you do. Whoa. Um, so like whatever our, we tell our kids that whatever things you see us do, that's what we want you to do. That's not easy. And there are times that we are going to fail big time. And there are times that our kids are going to act like we are and they're going to get in trouble. It's hard being a parent. Then it closes out with this. Remember I said it's going to be a bit of reading here. Skip down and it says, I know how this is, this is Paul again. I know how to be abased and I know how to abound where, I'm sorry, everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
we got a lot of worries. Uh, my husband and I have a lot of worries right now. And then those are the verses. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, but we have to learn how to be content, whether we are blessed with finances or whether we are really not blessed with finances. We have to learn to be content whether we feel the freedoms that we want or whether we don't feel the freedoms that we want. We have to be content. Just continue, continue. Um, not only am I selfish, but I am often discontented. Oh, there was something else I wanted to share with you. Okay, see, I'm getting all about me. Um, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And amen. Um, so that's, that's, those are the verses that have been big for me. That's where I'm really trying to focus. That's what's going to help me get up and out and going. Um, I struggle big time with depression and anxiety. Uh, it's not, I've said this before. Hopelessness is abounding right now. I believe in California, the suicide rate has exceeded the death rate for the current thing that everybody's worrying about. Um, hopelessness is not fun and I struggle with it and I struggle with deep depression and um, a lot of other people do too. So we got to have firm. The only, my stitching is wonderful and I love it, but that's not the piece that passes understanding. God's word is if we're looking for truth and not sure where to find truth. I know my truth is in God's word, inspired, written God's word. That's my truth. I'm holding on to that. I'm sticking to that. Um, and I'm getting off of sugar. That's the other thing I would love to challenge you guys. Keto's not for everybody. It is not easy. I hated it the first six months. And I'm probably going to hate it tomorrow too. Um, but sugar is not good for you. So if you can find a way to reduce your sugar, I would encourage you guys to do that. So um, what else can I share with you? Um, I just want to share with you guys the depth of my appreciation for your words of affirmation and your kindness and the love that you show. And I just too want to apologize that I have not gotten to all the comments, but those are, those are a gift that you give me. And I guess sometimes I just can't open that gift and respond right away because some days, uh, you know, when you struggle, some days is just enough just to get dressed and get those boots on and get out the door and go to work. And that's how it's been for me. Um, so thank you. And thanks for sticking with me for, for those of you that stick to the end. And I know there's a lot of you that, um, that tell me that this is the favorite part of the whole video. And this is where this, this, and I'm, I'm, it's like I'm not even wanting to look you in the eye right now, and I'm going to. It is hard to be totally vulnerable like this, like I am right now. Um, it's uncomfortable. But I feel safe because those of you that watch to the very end are in this with me. Whether you share my exact faith or not, you are in this world with me. And I appreciate that. And I value that. And I thank you for that. And, um, God bless you. Thank you. And, um, may you choose joy nevertheless this year in 2021 and may you be blessed. Thank you guys.